All right, you guys, next story up. So Pastor Lamar Whitehead, he was delivering his uh, Sunday sermon this past Sunday at his church, the Leaders of Tomorrow International Ministries. This is a church in Brooklyn. Uh, when three armed gunmen came into his church um, and robbed the pastor and his wife of their jewelry, okay? Um, we were able to see it didn't see it live i didn't anyway but people were able to see it live because it was sunday it was 11 15 in the morning it was streaming live on um you know youtube or wherever for the people to you know the church goers who are not able to go in person they're watching online um so everybody was able to see that the pastor in the middle of his sermon he gets down on the floor like okay 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 like and has his hands up and you are able to see the three gunmen walking around in the church um, <laughs> is this one guy that just sitting over in the corner just looking? I said, nigga, you ain't got down or nothing. He ain't look nervous or nothing. I said, y'all need to check on him. See, see, see exactly who he is and what he was to these three men. They robbed the pastor and his wife. Apparently, uh, four hundred thousand to one million dollars in jewelry, depending on who you ask. Okay, now, <laughs> why, why? do we have a million dollars worth of jewelry on at church? I mean, there's so many things that so morally, I mean, not morally wrong. Pastor Whitehead said that if he can afford things, nice things, and he wants to buy it, then he should be able to buy it. And that's absolutely true. Okay. But when you have a church and you have people there of all types, you know, some people have money, some people don't. It's just never, I don't think that it's a great look. Now, nobody's saying that the pastor ought to be destitute and not have nice things and everything, but a fucking million dollars in jewelry at church, that is flashy. That is doing too fucking much, okay? And you also got to be crazy in this day and time to be walking around and flashing that kind of jewelry with the state of the fucking United States. Like these people are robbing folks and everything. And, you know, so I, I you know, when I was listening to the story, I was just like, yeah, that is awful. I wouldn't want that to happen to anybody. That's like a big fear to be robbed. I'd be terrified. Right. But. <sighs> I don't want you to be having all that jewelry, y'all. Not at church. Really, we can get into this discussion of how... I don't even know if this is a mega church. Like, I don't know anything about the church. But we can always get into a conversation about the church. The church is supposed to belong to the people. It's not supposed to belong to the pastor. It's supposed to be a board. The board is supposed to hire the pastor, put him on a salary according to what the church brings in. And then, you know, the money is equally distributed through ministry, through the payroll, through, you know, whatever else that you are doing in the church. But when... Because he was saying that he owned the church. So I don't know, you guys. I, I don't want to get too deep into it. But I just was just like a fucking million dollars. I mean, why are we doing that? Okay? It, it, it ain't a good look. Whether or not you got the shit legit, legitimately, it's still just like... But I guess they was like, fuck it. We don't wear it to church. Where are we going to wear that? Because we, you know, probably do everything with the church. But I was just like, that's that's just too much. But... Um, I don't want to make it seem like I'm feeling like that's what you get because that is not what you get, okay? You should never be, you know, the, people want what you have and that's too bad, all right? You you should be able to have your shit and not have to worry about motherfuckers taking it from you, but that's just where we are today, you know? So anyway, he was emotional about it, which I would imagine that he would be. He said that the children and the women in his church were terrorized and um, I was like, I bet you some fucking men was terrorized other than the homeboy that was sitting over in the corner. But I was just like, don't just put it on the women and the children. Everybody looking down the barrel of a gun should be terrorized, okay? But anyway, he said, you know, he just felt really bad. His daughter is still not talking about, like, all of this. So, yeah, my heart goes out to him because people don't deserve that. Um, um, now, Larry Reed has a... You know, he has a, what is it, a podcast? And he also goes on Instagram Live and he, he, he does his show there sometimes. So he was doing his show and he was talking to a Genesis Warren, who's a pastor of another church. 
um, or she's a minister. I'm not sure if she's a pastor. But anyway, I guess they were discussing the robbery. I haven't seen the video of what they were actually discussing, but I'm, I think that is just apparent that they were talking about the robbery. I don't know if they were laughing or if they were just sort of like, man, can you believe that? Like, you know how it can be. So anyway, the pastor, Whitehead, either somebody called him or he was listening in, he ain't like that shit. So he called and completely lost it. I was just like, now the man, first of all, is way too emotional. Somebody needed to have, you know, kept him from doing this because at the end of the day, you a man of the cloth. Do I expect you to carry yourself at a higher standard? Yes. Yes. Okay. For him to get on there, he starts talking about the woman. He said that they were joking about it. They were like, we weren't joking about it. He says, you guys are laughing and joking about it, you know, and then he just starts insulting them. He calls the girl fat, um, calls her Biggie Big. He was like, you're not Biggie Smalls, you Biggie Big, okay? And then he talks about Larry Reed, calls him ugly, um, calls him a beast, all of this stuff. And I was just like, okay, it's clear that he's lost it, okay? Somebody get past the white head off the phone, all right? Because this is, you should be able to express a little bit better your disdain for the way that they were handling the story now he could definitely have called in and be like hey listen i know that you guys have to make it an entertaining show for the people that listen and everything but i just want to remind you that this was real people that was involved my wife was involved my children were there people were terrorizing there like just be a little bit more and then you could have had a conversation because then they could have been like oh no we weren't laughing about that what we said was and then you guys could have had came to some sort of something or they could have just been like we sorry we shouldn't have did that okay but for you to get on there and just <laughs> just i mean i was just like this is such a bad look like but apparently he's somewhat of a controversial uh pastor um and apparently flashy <laughs> um with this million dollars worth of jewelry that you wear in the church oh gosh Anyway, you guys, they did not catch the three gunmen. They are still looking for those three men. As far as Larry Reed and uh, Pastor Whitehead, I would imagine that Pastor Whitehead will not be a guest on Larry Reed's show any longer. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, I can understand why he would be emotional, but it was just like, uh -uh, I don't need my pastor to be sounding like just any old nigga off the street. Like, I, I need you to have some decorum. I need you to be able to... <laughs> I need you to be able to express yourself better, okay? I don't want you to be like me, all right? That's why I call you pastor. This is you the one that's leading the flock, okay? So I just, I'm gonna need Pastor Whitehead to do better. And if he is super emotional, which he's allowed to be, then we don't need Pastor Whitehead out there talking. Get you a spokesperson that can actually relay exactly how you feel without resorting to to insults like that and then you can maybe get somewhere with it but that pastor white here he was ready to whoop some ass <laughs> i think if he knew where they was he'd have been on his way there all right you guys so next story up uh let's see the pink sauce the pink sauce, the viral sensation on TikTok that I didn't know anything about until just recently. But when I saw the damn pictures of the sauce and when I actually saw the sauce live being used on things, I was like, that looks so fucking disgusting. I don't even know what makes people... Like, I have this thing about when I eat something, it has to look like it's something that needs to... that's supposed to be eaten. I don't like certain colors. I don't like certain textures. Um, I'm not so picky as that I don't want my food to touch. Like, I don't care about that. But I don't like, like, all my food mixed up together. So, like, when I go, for instance, when I go to Chipotle and I get a burrito bowl, I don't mix my bowl. I just eat it in a little section like that. And there, every little scoop is what I eat. Okay? So, <clears throat> anyway, certain things just gross me out. That pink sauce shit looks like Pepto-Bismol. I don't understand why motherfuckers are even interested in buying that for some damn food anyway. Who puts pink shit on their damn chicken and, you know, so I guess it was originally she put it out like as a dipping sauce, okay? And I guess it was novelty and it was pink and, you know, but I guess she didn't realize that it was going to become this huge sensation on TikTok 
and everybody had to get some of the the um the sauce the pink sauce now they say that the base of this pink sauce is made from dragon fruit hence the color pink even though dragon fruit on the inside is white <laughs> okay um but maybe maybe they have different dragon maybe, maybe there's different species of the dragon fruit that have different color i don't know you guys don't don't get me wrong but i've always thought or is that passion fruit no it's maybe it's passion fruit that i'm thinking of but i guess dragon fruit has a pink tinge to it or pink hue to it so um that is why the sauce is supposedly as neon pink as it is okay um when the thing went viral and everybody had to have it this woman who was just cooking this shit in her or mixing it up in her own house, all of a sudden she had to meet the demand of all these orders. Everybody wanted the pink sauce and they say that it tastes good, okay? Um, <clears throat> but of course, when you have a high demand for something, then you get all these other issues. First of all, people were having problems with the the the, um, the shit, the, the, not the shit, the sauce itself, when it would come in the mail, sometimes it would be open. Um, because it had banged around in the mail. The packaging was not great. It was in bags instead of boxes, which just makes sense to me. Like, you should not put that in a bag. But, you know, everybody has growing pains. They learn as they go. Um, people were concerned about the the ingredients in this pink sauce. Now, remember, this is a woman who created this at her house. She doesn't want to give away her ingredients. She doesn't want to give away her sauce so that somebody else can make it on a mass scale and put her out of business. So she said she will not, you know, display or disclose her tactics or how she creates this sauce. Well, people have a problem with that. Now, I thought that it was a law that you had to have ingredients, you had to have your ingredients listed on your product, but that's not necessarily true. The way the law works in Florida, which is where she is based, they're saying that as um, an entrepreneur can create a food and sell it in their unlicensed, uncertified kitchen um, if it has a low risk for like foodborne illnesses. If it has a low risk and if you're not making more than $250,000 um, in the year, then you can do this, all right? Now, the way you guys been acting, the shit is making more than $250,000, okay? Because from what she said that she's had a hard time keeping up with the demand, but you know, she's got a staff and they've been working around the clock to make sure that they get all this out. Um, <clears throat> she did put out a little bit of a list of the ingredients, but didn't put the whole list out. People started saying, is this FDA approved? <laughs> this is going to get on the damn social media and say, I don't know why everybody is asking if this is FDA approved. This is not a medical grade type of um, food. Like, I, it's not medicine. I was just like, girl, this food and drug administration. Y'all eating shit from somebody that don't know what the FDA stands for. <laughs> I mean, not that everybody need to know what the FDA stands for, but if you in food, if you making a food, don't you think you would at least know something about it? So that's the first concern right there. The fact that you don't know what the damn um, ingredients are, that's the next problem, okay? Half of y'all don't even want to eat at a motherfucker's house, but then here you go ordering shit from TikTok and Instagram, and, and Debbie is good for it. I should be telling y'all Debbie's business, but Debbie loves to support small businesses on Instagram. And that's all good and everything. But sometimes you just like, instead of getting caught up in the hype, you need to realize that this is just a motherfucker that probably went to the bathroom, ain't washed their hands, came back to the kitchen, and you know, they might have a fucking dog, a cat on their counters, like all of these things, you know, and then here you just buying the shit willy nilly just because you saw it on Instagram. Like, I'm not, that's not me. Okay. That is definitely not me. And I'm not, I'm not finicky. I love everything. Most people that know me, you guys know that I have an appetite and I ain't got no problem showing it. But when it comes to shit like that, uh-uh. Okay. So, um, people have problems with the variations in the color. I guess it was a bright neon pink. Now she's toned it down because it was turning people's boo-boo pink. Okay. And she said she didn't want people to be alarmed with red and pink boo-boo. You know, all this shit being all these bright ass colors. So she's trying to tone down. And so, you know, she's trying to work on it. She says she's getting it tra trademarked. But in the meantime, all y'all trying to put the pressure and trying to break the code and get the recipe, you know, 
apparently she said it was milk based some people say no it's got to be mayonnaise based um and then the fact that milk is being traveled you know in the in the um <clears throat> in the uh just through the mail but then i'm thinking like okay as long as it's closed and sealed correctly then it should be fine it's not milk it might have milk in it but i would imagine that maybe ranch dressing has milk in it too okay or it has some sort of cream that makes it like that so i might be wrong i might be wrong but but what i'm saying is she's saying that as long as it's sealed airtight until you open it once you open it then you need to put it in the refrigerator but otherwise it can sit in your can't you know pantry until you open it now some people don't even put their hot sauce in the in the in the refrigerator i put hot sauce in the refrigerator okay the only thing that i don't put in the refrigerator is syrup because i need my syrup to flow nicely but everything else all them sauces and everything it just seems like it's supposed to be in the refrigerator so y'all can <laughs> y'all fight your mama on that one but um yeah you guys this pink sauce have any of you guys tried it I mean, if you have, y'all have to let me know how it is. I mean, that's nothing that I'm ever going to want to taste because just the sight of it grosses me out. But y'all let me know. Put me up on the game, baby. Is it just to die for? Y'all gonna fuck around and die by it. <laughs> let me not say that. Let me not wish that on the on the rock stars. Lord, take that back. Yeah, y'all y'all be careful out there. Okay, everything that look good don't mean that you're supposed to have it. All right, you guys, next story up. So R. Kelly's sisters. I debated even talking about this because, you know, when it's family, um, even though, even though if I was even family with R. Kelly, there's just certain things that I'm just not going to support, period. Okay. And the things that he has been accused and now found guilty of doing, I couldn't support that. All right. But Many times, family members, they're family. They love you. They have a different relationship than you. So, you know, the whoever did this interview with these sisters, I was just like, I mean, why are you guys even talking to the sisters? Of course they're going to... I mean, not of course, but a lot of times they're going to support their brother no matter what. I think I probably would have expected them to just be like, yeah, our brother is flawed. We love him still. Like, I'm not saying you got to abandon your family member. But sometimes you might have to love them from afar, you know. Um, but in this interview, they were on Good Day Britain. And uh, so, well, let me see, what was the names? Teresa, Cassandra, and Lisa. Okay. They were, uh, they all got such like for real just generic names. Teresa, Cassandra, Lisa, Robert. Um, what's his other brother's name? But anyway, um, they said that they, they don't believe that he was guilty of messing with underage girls now now they say that he does have a proclivity for the young woman but not the underage girls i was like did you guys fucking forget that he married Aaliyah when she was 14 fucking years old or was it 15 they was fucking at 14 she was 14 like what are you talking about that has been established Okay, but I guess they didn't put that part out their mind. They said, yeah, you know, the fact that he was found guilty and put in jail for all that time is because he was black. We can't pull the race card on this one. Can't do it, y'all. Can't do it. So um, they basically feel that he was railroaded. They feel that people got up there, that they lied, and that they was not going to believe when they hadn't seen for their own eyes. Well, who sees crimes for their own fucking eyes? that's why it's called a crime like it's not something that you do out there in the public this is some shit you do on the sneak tip some shit you do behind closed doors some shit you do when you know you're not supposed to be doing it that's the whole point you know so of course you wouldn't see these things i wouldn't imagine that i've seen my brother's worst parts of them either who sees the worst parts of their siblings or their family members or anybody for that for that matter you know so i was just like girl I just feel like either they just really are in denial or they just wanted a moment. You wanted to get on because you already knew everybody was going to be like, girl, if you don't get off this fucking people's TV and let them talk about the weather or something. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to see people go to jail. And it's unfortunate that R. Kelly, I mean, such a huge extreme talent. 
I mean, great memories to some R. Kelly music. I'm talking about some good ass fucking times. Okay? But, mm, mm, mm. we can't deny that he's done what he's done. Golly, child. Anyway, did you guys see that interview? <laughs> I was just like, girl, that's what you believe? Oh, okay. Are you guys next story? So, you know, they are determined to try to pit black women against each other. It happens all the time and it happens in entertainment and acting and music. Um, just there's no, for whatever reason, there's never enough room at the table for two black women to do something. And then a man can do it all the time, but, the, but the, and even white women and other nationalities and everything, the minute you get two black women, we got to be trying to compare them. Instead of celebrating their accomplishments individually, um, when we should, you guys. So this is about Zendaya and um, Kiki Palmer. Now, I, I love both of them. I think they're both phenomenal actresses. That damn Kiki Palmer is so fucking funny. Um, and Zendaya is just so good at what she does. There's no reason for us to be comparing. There was a there was a, a topic that was brought up on social media about the parallels of the, or the what wasn't parallels in their careers and the fact that Zendaya seems to be the woman of the moment right now and maybe it has something to do with colorism. And they wanted to unpack that, okay? Um, and even when I first read that, I, before I even saw Kiki Palmer's response, Zendaya didn't even, I don't even think that she even gave a response because she just probably was like, I'm not feeding into that shit. But, um... Before I even read the Kiki Palmer's response, which I'll read to you in a second, um, I was just like, Kiki Palmer has been fucking around since she was like five years old. What are you talking about? This woman has been consistently working since she was a young child, okay? And Kiki Palmer got to be somewhere in her late 20s or something, okay? This girl has always been booked and busy. Zendaya is booked and busy, okay? And so... I, I'm not understanding why you need to even compare. And people seem to think that her success with this new movie from Jordan Peele, Nope, which I haven't seen yet, and I've heard very mixed reviews, so I'm not in no rush to see it, but um, that this was like her breakout role. And I was just like, this girl been in a whole bunch of stuff. What are y'all talking about? Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> like I said, Kiki did respond, and this is what she said. Some people said that it was her being cocky, but I think she was just trying to make a point of this is who Kiki Palmer is. Hold on, let me get it. I've been a leading lady since I was 11 years old. I have over 100 plus credits and currently starring in an original screenplay that's the number one film at the box office, Nope. I've had a blessed career thus far. I couldn't ask for more, but God continues to surprise me. A great example of colorism to, is to believe I can be compared to anyone. I am the youngest talk show host ever. The first black woman to stay, the first black woman to star in her own show on Nickelodeon and the youngest and first black Cinderella on Broadway. I am an incomparable talent, baby. This is Kiki Palmer, okay? And I love Kiki Palmer because she always expresses herself well. She's smart, she's funny, witty, on top of it. Um, very, very talented. And just for people to be comparing her and Zendaya, it's unfortunate. And it's a disservice to both of them because they've both done very well in their careers and they shouldn't have to be, you know, while we trying to, to you know, hone, while we trying to forge our path in this here industry, and it's already hard enough from outside for us. We don't need motherfuckers telling us as two black women that, you know, why is this one doing better? Is it because of your skins? Let's stop that. Let's stop that. Okay. And I'm glad that Kiki compared. And I'm sure her and Zendaya don't have any problems with each other. As a matter of fact, she posted a picture of the two of them together. And um, I'm glad Zendaya didn't even feed into it. So y'all, y'all let me know what you think about it though. Isn't it unfortunate that women, women can't, everybody can't be successful? It's always just got to be one at the top, and that's just really too bad. Now, a feel-good story that I have for you guys. You guys remember the vitriol and the, I would almost say hate that um, at least Vivica Fox had for Kenya. Um, these two did not like each other and have not liked each other uh, for the past almost 10 years. Remember that they were both on uh, YSAP's 
successful reality show, uh, The Celebrity Apprentice. And remember, you would go on that show and you would create businesses and, you know, all these plans and all that. And they would figure out who would be the best at it. Um, and Vivica and Kenya in another, you know, black women pitted against each other. Um, Kenya definitely came for Viv Vivica. I don't even really remember. I remember seeing clips. I've never was really a watcher of the show, but I can remember some certain clips from that season. Um, and remember it all ended with Vivica getting Kenya kicked out because she stole her phone and said, you know, so it was this whole thing. And that Vivica was mad, mad. Okay. I mean, called her a trick. When you start pulling out them type of, you know, them type of uh, <laughs> words on national TV, and that is a for real hood word, you know, she really meant that. And um, Kenya got put off the show or whatever, but ever since then, they haven't, Vivica hasn't seen it for her. As a matter of fact, even just up to two years ago, um, Vivica said that she never, she has no intentions of ever fucking with Kenya again, okay? But oh, what, uh, you know, after COVID happens and uh, our perspectives probably change and we realize life is too short, um, these two have buried the hatchet. Um, uh, uh, Kenya was on, what's the name of the show? On Fox Soul with Vivica and um, Lisa Ray and uh, Selena and um, Claudia Jordan. You guys know the show I'm talking of. Is it ladies? I was about to say the Ooh, the Ladies First podcast. Shout out to y'all over there, but no, not that one. <laughs> um, I can't even think of the name. Queen? Child, I can't think of it. But anyway, she was on that show. And um, they, they let us know that they actually was able to bury the hatchet privately. They bumped into each other at Crustacean and they just walked up to each other and started talking. And um, they realized that the beef was silly and, you know, just kind of buried it thin. Now, Kenya said that she realized, um, that she said it hit her like a ton of bricks, that she actually very much did hurt Vivica, that Vivica was hurt in that whole thing. Um, and I mean, I guess we've seen Vivica be emotional about things that we don't understand why you this emotional, but I guess that's just her makeup. That's just how she is. And Kenya said that she realized that she actually did really hurt Vivica. Um, on that show and that she needed to apologize okay and that she's always had love for Vivica before that had happened and I guess even afterwards and her realizing that maybe she needed to apologize because you know Vivica is like you know the one of those women's women out there you know and the, we, we all love her and all that um, so she said that she realized that she needed to you know, apologize and that they needed to move forward. I mean, you've got two very, you know, th these are very much seen black women in the industry. Um, like I just said, we don't need to be fighting our own. So it's good that, and then when you get older, like, I'm not saying that they're old, but they're older, you know, and it's just like later for that. Like, why am I still fighting with somebody? I'm fucking almost 55 fucking years old, you know? So, um, <clears throat> I think it's great. I think it's a, good look for both of them um like i said with all of the other shit to worry about in the world today we shouldn't have to be trying to hold on to beefs about somebody that stole your phone on a reality show so um good 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 for them and then lastly you guys i'm gonna close it out with the um wakanda forever trailer i mean you guys already know how i feel about it so we didn't really talk about the trailer last week. We actually just talked about um, Kaluuya not being on the show, on the in the movie. But they released the trailer, and you guys, I'm telling you, had a tear. Okay, because first of all, you guys know that I'm a Marvel junkie. I love Marvel movies. I love Avengers um, and Black Panther. What that movie meant. Um, just for the community and I mean I just really so it, it, you know the music is inspiring and you can tell that they really did their research and it's like so many things to just take in and just feel so proud of and just you know when they show the the mural of um, Chad Boswick or T'Challa I should say um, oh my god that like that almost made me cry when when Angela I was about to say Angela Bofield when Angela Bassett Shout out to my older rock stars out there who know who Angela Bofield is. But um, <clears throat> when she said, How, you know, I have lost all of my family. Have I not given enough or something like that? I was just like, 
I mean, that line meant so much more because Chadwick Boseman was like family to us and he's gone, real life gone, not in the movie, but I mean, in the movie as well. But, you know, just, I, I think that they, they, they know how important this movie is and they've made it a point to, you know, be very careful with it and, and do what they're supposed to, to do to make sure that it's not a mockery or it's not anything wrong or anything like that. So I'm just, I'm pumped. I'm excited about the trailer. I'm excited about the movie. It comes out in November. Definitely going to be seeing it opening weekend. As soon as they start buy, um, selling them tickets, I advise everybody out there to buy your ticket ahead of time because it is going to be one of those situations where you are not going to be able to get tickets the day of, okay? So, um, yeah, I'm happy. Gave me a warm and fuzzy, gave me, you know, tight chest, folk, uh, eyes, watering, all of that. Went through all the emotions. I'm just so proud. Happy for Ryan Coogler and all of the rest of the cast and crew and everybody. Tyler Perry, we're out here in, in uh, Atlanta where they film a lot of his, a lot of the movie at his studios. I mean, everybody just coming up on this and, I, and I'm just really happy for everybody. So, yeah loved loved the trailer how did you feel about it all right you guys before i get off of here so <clears throat> i've had a death in the family um actually in deborah's family her grandmother um has passed so rest in peace to granny okay just has so many wonderful memories of her um you know me and debbie met in high school so I've been around that family for many, many, many years, and she was somebody who was important to me and the family. And so um, <clears throat> her funeral is this weekend, and so it's gonna throw off my video. It shouldn't, I'm hoping that it won't throw off my videos for Sunday. Um, I know that I'm gonna try really, really hard to get P-Valley up um on sunday i'm not sure about love and marriage dc i mean that's always the goal but i'm just letting you guys know that the videos on sunday may or may not happen on sunday it'll probably be up on monday okay but we're gonna try very very hard to at least get p valley up for you guys all right so just letting you guys know and rest in peace to granny um just i love you and i i'm, I'm just still can't believe that she is not here she was 90 three years old and um, lived a life. Was one of the first of their um, family to move from Belize to um, the United States and, you know, started the migration of many of their other family members that moved to the United States as well. And um, yeah, just, um, just heartbreaking loss, but um, this is life, right? <clears throat> but she did have a life. So rest in peace to granny. I'm gonna get off of here. We do this every single week, you guys. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe and make sure you come back. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.